Jesus Christ daddy we thank you because you are here fill us oh God more than our expectation in Jesus name we pray amen I honor the Lord God Almighty in the life of our father daddy Gio our mama Gio our mama and all the leaders, all members, every child of God that is here, I pray that our coming shall surely be fulfilled by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. The topic before us this afternoon is the power of the Holy Spirit to bring social change to this present generation can we say social change social change social change the power of the holy spirit to bring social change to this present generation as we have been studying together for the uh since yesterday we see that the holy spirit is involved practically in all facets of life in all areas of life the holy spirit is heavily involved and this is why we the children of god must not live without the holy spirit what we want to discuss this afternoon uh, has to do with the Spirit of God not only empowering you as an individual, empowering me as an individual to um, 
maybe be of benefit to the church, to the body of Christ within the four walls of our churches, or in fact to fight and win battles of life as we have been taught um, just a few hours ago, but also to uh, see how the Holy Spirit can use us to bring change to the world at large. That is what we expect to learn this afternoon. I want to begin by introducing the Holy Spirit as the third person in heaven. We know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The third person who was there at creation, moving over the face of the deep to bring a change. The Bible says that in the beginning, the earth was without form. And then the spirit of the Lord began to move on the deep. And from there on, form came. From there on, now God said, let there be light. The Holy Spirit is one who brings a change uh, of situation from formlessness to one that has form. Changes community that is filled with evil, changes it to a community that is filled with righteousness. A, a, the Holy Spirit is the agent of change in the Trinity. The power that brings about change in the Trinity. Now that change occurs in the lives of individuals and can occur in, the, in, the, in a nation or in nations or in the entirety of the world. So I am introducing the Holy Spirit as one who began his work from Genesis, from the creation of the earth as we know it, as one who enabled the change from formlessness to a world that had form. So, once he came in to bring about the change, then your creation and my creation was made possible. Therefore, when the Holy Spirit is at work, he can bring about creativity in your mind, in my mind, toward changing the lives of those who are destitute. And we're going to see it. So when you see Holy Spirit, I want you to see change. Holy Spirit brings about change. And we are particular this afternoon about social change. Social change. We've been talking about spiritual changes. Right? But um, can the Holy Spirit cause any change in our society? Yes, is the answer as we're going to learn this afternoon. Holy Spirit and social change. I think one of the best areas of the scripture we can look at to help us see the involvement or the power or the willingness of the Holy Spirit to bring uh, uh, social change in the present age, in the world that we live in, should be Isaiah chapter number 61. The first three verses, and it will be good for us to read. It's good for us to read. And if you see anything that looks like change as we are reading, just say change. You can say it out loud. When you get to a point and you realize, uh-huh, this is a change that the Holy Spirit is bringing. Just say change. Because that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit does. You know, the change that was taught to us earlier is the change in the uh, spiritual. Now, let us go. Is God concerned about society? Is the Holy Spirit concerned about the society? So when I carry... When I claim to carry the Holy Spirit, should I be affecting the society? We can the Holy Spirit move me to begin to make changes in the world around me? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Sir. The now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
because the Lord has anointed me to the spirit of the Lord is upon me too. I receive the Holy Spirit in order to. We are here to be filled the more with the Holy Spirit in order to. In other words, we are given the power for a purpose. But, but we want to stay within the scripture to let us know that one of the purposes is to bring change to the societies we live in. Yes. Number one, to bring good tidings. Somebody already spotted change there, right? To bring good tidings to who? To the, to the poor. The Holy Spirit is upon me to bring good tidings to the poor. To change the situation of the poor. And we have them in our society in all over. There are the poor. So the, the Isaiah is saying the Holy Spirit has been given me in order to begin to make a change in the lives of the poor. Yeah, so to heal the is, do, 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 do you think we have the broken hearted in our communities? That is change. So whenever you spot change, just shout it loud and say change. Societal change. Number one, to make sure that I bring good news to the poor. Number two, to make sure that I get to the broken hearted. Yeah? Proclaim liberty to the captive. Change. To open the prison doors to those who are bound. Change. The Holy Spirit is upon me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. And the day of vengeance. Because somebody got to tell that Christ's coming is at hand. So that anyone who is sleeping can be awake and be made ready. Yes. Can you see? Right? The Holy Spirit came upon me to comfort those who mourn. Yes. To console those who are mourning in our society. To bring beauty into the lives of those who are, are covered with uh, sorrow and ashes and, 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 and dirt and low self-esteem. Yes. So I can bring oil of joy upon those who are mourning. Those who have heaviness in their heart. The spirit of God is given to me so that I can give them a garment of praise. That my life can cause somebody to begin to pray, praise God. That my words, my, my lifestyle, my character can cause somebody to begin to give praise to God. Even though they once were living in heaviness of heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Can you go to four? Two is good. Now, 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 now. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and me, and we begin to manifest, right? All the ruined places will become built. It's a change in the society. Yes. They will repair ruined cities. Let's stop there. Thank you, sir, for now. So, the Holy Spirit is given to you and to me to cause a change in the society. That's what we mean. The power of the Holy Spirit to bring social change in this present generation. All right? So, as it was taught to us earlier, and I begin to speak in tongues, right? Now, uh, with that, I, ha I have received the power. You have received the power to begin to make some things happen in our societies. Outside of the four walls of the church. So we see why the Holy Spirit is given.
to cause a change in the society. It is not given just for my own personal um, upliftment and I'm done. Oh yes, I have the Holy Spirit now. Okay, God talks to me. God talks to me to do what? That's what Isaiah is saying here. Christ would confirm the same. St. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 verse 19. The same thing Christ would confirm. What Isaiah is saying here. Christ also will say the same. There is a reason why I have the spirit of God. It is to set the captives free. There is a reason why I have the spirit of God. It is to see how much of the poor I can turn their lives around. How much of the destitute I can turn their lives around. How much of the, uh, uh, how many homeless I can affect somehow. How many sick I can heal with the power of the spirit of God that is upon me. Our cities are filled with the sick. Filled with the poor. Filled with the downtrodden. So Jesus says, and the, uh, and the prophet says here, listen, when we gather here and say, Holy Spirit, fall upon me. We are to know what should we be doing once the Holy Spirit falls upon us. What did the disciples do? When the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Did they not go about healing? That's a, that's a change. That's a change in one family. If they, if they healed one person by the beautiful gate. That was a change in the life of that person. And in the life of everyone that uh, uh, was part of his family. The less sickness, the better. The less diseases, the better. So. Please, as we come this weekend, waiting upon the Lord for the endowment of his spirit, let us not think that the Holy Spirit will be given to us for selfishness. God would be looking for who will allow him or herself to be used to touch somebody in the city with the power they carry. To change someone's situation. With the power they carry. Maybe we'll come back to this scripture. But at least I, I wanted to uh, help us to see that clearly. That the spirit of God that is given to us. Whether it is uh, healing. Um, or it is miracle. Or it is faith. Or it is speaking in tongues. Or it is uh, interpretation of tongues. Or it is administration. Or it is helps. Or it is prophecy, or it is teaching, or it is a, 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 a apostleship, or pastoring, or whatever gift is given us by the Holy Spirit. They are meant to be utilized in breaking the bonds of the people around us. Of course, we benefit. We benefit in that we too are set free from the bonds of the devil. Yes, we benefit in that we can connect directly with the Lord Jesus. Yes, we benefit that we can now speak in languages that the devil cannot understand. That's yes, we benefit. But our benefit is to be shared with our society. That's when we actually fall into the full function of the intention of the giver of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about Holy Spirit and change in our society. When we receive the spirit of the living God, we, we are to engage this world system in all its fabric in order to empower the powerless. God is going to breathe upon you and me. By the time we depart from this place, there is a seed that is going to be sown in you. Something that you will say, yeah, this is what the spirit of God is leading me to begin to do for my society to bring a change. This is what I'm going to begin to do. Pastor, this is what our church should begin to do. Uh, my family, let us get involved in this. The spirit of God is laying it upon my heart that the people are suffering in this particular area of their life. Let us go and solve that problem. 
The Holy Ghost is there to use us to solve problems of the society. If we stayed in church alone and uh, used the, uh, the power of the Holy Ghost just to, for ourselves, then we would not be like Jesus. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to set the captives free. Isaiah said, the Holy Spirit is upon me to set, to loosen the bonds of wickedness from those that have been captivated and incarcerated by such. So, Christians who desire social change must be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We may have compassion naturally, but without the help of the Spirit of the living God, we're not able to make the changes that we want to make. And if we make physical changes uh, and they are not spiritually impacted, then we, they are as good as not having gotten any help. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is essential. I read the book of one man, um, actually, while I, while I was in school, they made us uh, write, 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 write. Kept on writing. Uh, one Amos Young says, Ecclesial holiness without a corresponding social dimension is hypocritical. Church, church, church holiness. Without getting involved in the society to solve the problems of the society around us, we are hypocrites. We say God loves the world that he, okay, so we are the only, we are the only one that is made up of world. That cannot be true. If indeed we believe that God loves the world, then the power of God in us must carry us into the world to begin to show the love. Of God. That's what that the statement is that that man made. Ecclesial holiness without corresponding social dimension to it is hypocritical. So we must begin to self-examine. Okay, the spirit of the Lord that I have in me. What is what what what, what change is that uh, making in the world around me? Am I concerned like? The Holy Spirit would have me to be concerned. So when the Spirit of God is poured out upon all flesh, including you, including myself, we, are, we become enabled to use the gift of the Spirit of God. Not only to liberate the people within our, our churches, but to grant, grant grace and release. And blessings and healings to the people around us. I'm going to begin with the first one that looks like soul winning. Sounds like soul winning. Can interpret like soul winning. In that first verse of Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. Number one. To preach. 